So I think you can already get excited because I don't think we have had a time where it's so cheap to actually get into the Apple ecosystem. If you want to be a music producer, a content creator or, or anything really you do with a computer and actually be able to do some serious real work. I mean, if you need a laptop, the entry level MacBook Airs are perfectly capable of doing this. And I mean, if you want a desktop, the cheapest Mac Mini M4, for example, is also a very capable machine starting at a very low price and so both of these computers also now starts out at 16 gigs of memory which is enough if you are just starting out or even if you have a few years under your belt now apple is uh, transitioning to ai and i think that's one of the reasons they actually have to have a little bit more memory but uh, yeah it's great nevertheless now how these computers perform in let's say music production depends on how big projects you produce of course how many tracks you have how many plugins you have how many synthesizers you have all of that so, for example, the video above me here will show you how the M3 MacBook Air performs since a few music production projects. And the only thing I don't really like with uh, Apple's pricing is uh, the uh, storage. If you buy the cheapest Mac Mini, it comes with 256 gigabytes of storage and that's pretty low in nowadays if you want to add let's say two terabytes which is i think more normal that will actually cost you eight hundred dollars extra and i think that's pretty insane and i mean you can use something like this this is an enclosure then we'll just you just have to add and hard drive to it. You can get a two terabyte hard drive for, I mean, $140, something like that. And I mean, an enclosure like this from Psyche, it costs between 90 to $120, something like that. I'm going to test it at some point, so get subscribed so you don't miss that. I mean, the only thing you lose by adding external storage is of course the hassle with having another device. And the speed is a bit lower, but it's not like significant in day-to-day -day use. Now, we are going to get a little nerdy. The software you are going to use also for music production might decide what type of m4 cpu you should go for in your new mac so a lot of music production software such as logic ableton and others they use performance cores for its processing so remember that the mac mini then or the entry level one has four performance cores and six efficiency course so i think i can add in an example here in a video where i can show two DOS which are loaded to the max and how they utilize the cpu so the one here with the bars that are not completely filled means that the efficiency course aren't doing much in music production performance even if we have loaded that DAW to its fullest while the other one is able to utilize all cpu cores both performance cores and efficiency cores in a music production setting. So this is where it gets interesting because there are certain DAWs that can actually utilize efficiency cores as well, as I have seen in some of my testing, such as Reaper and Cubase. And I also know that Pro Tools and FL Studio, to an extent, is also able to utilize efficiency cores of a Mac, which is something that a, another YouTuber called James uh, San, I think, has shown extensively in one of his videos. And I recommend also watching them if you want to see more about this. So now you see why the Mac Mini M4 entry level can be a great choice for music production, especially if you use one of these DAWs that utilize, for example, efficiency cores. Now, does that mean that because only has four performance cores, the Mac Mini entry level, for example, that it will perform badly in Logic or Ableton or other DAWs that only use performance cores? Well, the answer here is uh, obviously no. And I want to refer to my previous videos on this channel. You can see where I test the M1, the M3. And remember that those Macs only has four performance cores and four efficiency cores. So they are core wise, they are actually lower than the Mac mini. And even in uh, clock speed, they are even lower than the Mac mini, as well as an older <laughs> generation CPU. So the M4 will still deliver great performance for Ableton and Logic with four performance cores. Because I mean, the M4 is just so powerful uh, on its own. If you are worried and you're going to use Ableton or Logic, just go for the M4 Pro, which gives you from eight performance cores 
and you should be good to go. Now we have a computer, you have software, and it's time to maybe think about peripherals. If you're not going to record anything at all, you just may, might get by without buying any external interface at all, because the MacBook Air and the Mac Mini can have a high impedance headphone outputs. So you can use actually these studio headphones directly with these uh, Macs without any headphone amplifier or anything like that. And all DAWs of course also works with Apple internal sound card, core audio, this is just baked into the OS so you don't really have to think much about that. And Apple have also made it very easy to use actually the microphone on your iPhone and you can tether your iPhone directly into your Mac wirelessly to use it as a microphone source. Now if you want to have external speakers, if you want to record like uh, synthesizers, instruments, uh, external audio from other microphones uh, and interfaces of course necessary and here you have a lot to choose from but the stuff I mean folk the stuff Focusrite makes for example is really good and really cheap most of them you also just have to connect them to your Mac and they will work without you having to download any drivers or install anything and uh, I will leave links below to some of these interfaces I suggest that should work just fine in terms of monitoring keyboard I mean just use what you have get the stuff that suits you also remember that keyboards and mouses usually works between both Mac and and Windows computer, so you don't necessarily have to think much about compatibility uh, that way. I think it's easy to believe that you need the highest M4 Max to be able to do some actual serious work on your computer. And maybe at some point in our li <laughs> computer life, like let's say five or ten years ago, maybe that sort of was the case. Nowadays, I don't think that. I feel that many newcomers or people that don't really know much about computers think they need the absolute top of the line to to be able to do music production or work. But I'm sure that most people will get by with some kind of entry-level computer from Apple today. I mean, these machines run circles around the older Intel machines and people were able to produce music or do their content creation on these slow machines as well. And I have a sort of an anecdote. I had the, a, a M3 MacBook Air for a while when I was uh, switching computers just to, just to have a Mac and uh, be able to work a little bit. And um, I was going to edit videos on my PC with a uh, pretty powerful rev uh, PC CPU. And you know, I actually went back to the MacBook Air to edit my videos because it was just <laughs> so much more fluid. Yeah, it, it didn't sort of lag, it didn't stutter. And my PC actually had uh, issues uh, editing this sort of uh, high quality video I, this camera makes. The M3 MacBook Air, I could actually use it for let's say 95% of what I was doing. That was actually pretty impressive. So these computers are are more good than uh, people uh, think, uh, I think. Uh, since the enterprise of the Mac Mini M4 is so cheap, considering what you get, you can actually start uh, or try to configure some of the same performing uh, stuff in the PC world, and the PC would cost a lot more actually than the Mac Mini. I'm not really sure if that PC actually would give you much more in music production performance because uh, music production performance is so optimized on a Mac now, especially with this new ARM-based uh, ecosystem that we have had uh, for a few years now. So if you're unsure if you need the M4 Max, I'm here to tell you that you most likely won't need it. It's easy to be blinded by performance numbers, and I mean, people like me or others showing how powerful these computers are, but at the end of the day, it is a tool that is meant to do a job. Now, if you want the M4 Max, that's of course another thing entirely, and of course allowed. I mean, if you have money to burn and you just you just want that performance, go ahead. But if you need it, probably not. Personally, I got the MacBook Pro M4 Pro with 10 performance cores, and I run my entire online presence from that laptop. I edit high bitrate 4K video in DaVinci Resolve. I produce, mix and master all of my music using Ableton Live and occasionally Logic Pro. I edit thumbnails and all of that stuff works without any issues at all. And as a side note, I noticed that my music production projects have actually gotten less complex than I uh, usually did a few years ago. I guess I'm able to make uh, uh, good sounding stuff with less tracks in my projects, so actually my needs for power in terms of music production have actually gone down. And uh, as my experience with uh, music production and different techniques needed to get the stuff sounding good improves by... Uh, hopefully improves a little bit.
hope this video makes you see that you might not necessarily need the best performing stuff. And by doing some specific choices, you can save a lot of money. If you just want to have a sort of a quick uh, takeaway here, if you are using uh, Reaper, Cubase, Pro Tools or a little FL Studio, I think. Base model Mac Mini M4 with four performance cores and six efficiency cores uh, should work fine. But if you are using Ableton Live and Logic Pro, you might consider going for the M4 Pro, which has more performance cores. But anyway, what you choose here, you are likely going to get it to work fine. Thank you for watching my videos. See you in the next one. Take care and goodbye.